Glad to be back with you. I've been getting a lot of requests for more beam problems, and I'm sorry I can't do them all, but I can do some of them. One of the requests I got was for a distributed load with a, an off-center force and done in English units, or imperial units, I guess. So I decided to do that one. That's something that my students can use as well. So what I've got here is a beam that's pinned on both ends, and it's got the little rollers over here. Because when a beam bends, it shortens just a little bit, and those rollers are just to acknowledge that we're going to let the beam shorten so we don't get any axial loads. I've got a distributed load of 100 pounds per foot across the 10-foot beam, and the axial or the uh, concentrated load here is six feet from the left-hand side of the beam. And I just decided to call the two ends A and B. All right, what I'd like to have us do is draw the load shear moment diagram. All right. Well, if whenever we're going to do this, load, load shear moment, there we go. Whenever you do this, draw a load shear moment diagram, whenever you do any problem like this, the first place to start is always a free body diagram. Let me make sure I'm going to keep us in the frame here. Oh, we're good. Um, it's always going to be a free body diagram. So let's start with that. Let's do this, and the first thing we're going to do is we've got to find the unknown forces here. We don't know what the force at A and the force at B is, the reaction loads. So let's do that first. Let's draw our load here. And we're going to get our distributed load, our point load. Okay, and that's 100 pounds per foot there. And these two we don't know. I'll call that A, Y, and B Y. Why? Because I've got to use a uh, 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 coordinate system here, positive coordinate system, and unless I have a pretty good reason, I'll almost always use that one. So that's a pretty good place to start. Now there's only one thing here. We've got a distributed load. How are we going to deal with that? Well, for, for finding the reaction forces at the end, we can concentrate that distributed load. We can find out what the total distributed load is and place that single force at the centroid of that load. Now the reason we can do this is that the reaction forces don't know the difference. This pin here and that pin here do not know the difference between a uh, distributed load and a properly concentrated load that has the same net force. Right? Now the beam itself does. You're going to get the wrong free body diagram if you or, uh, load shear moment diagram if you try to draw the load shear moment diagram by concentrating the force rather than distributing it. But you, but you can get the correct reaction forces. So let's do that. Let's concentrate the load in order to get the reaction forces. So I'm going to draw this same beam here quickly. And there's AY, BY, in our off-center 500-pound load there. Okay. What we don't have right yet is the uh, concentrated load representing that. Well, it's 100 pounds per foot times 10 feet, so it's going to be 1,000 pounds. And since this is symmetric across the beam, it's going to be in the center. So here's what I'm going to have. So I've got 1,000 pounds there. With this being 5 feet, I'll get my head out of your way here in a second, and that being 4 feet. Okay, so there you go. Now, I've got two unknowns, A, Y, and B, O, I, so I better have two equations. Well, there's, no, there's nothing going on in the x direction, so I don't care about that. So my two equations of equilibrium, equilibrium because this is a moving, are some of the forces in the y direction is zero, and some of the moments is zero. So let's do that. Some of the forces in the y direction equals zero. Well, again, let me get my head out of your way. So that's going to be A, Y minus a thousand pounds minus five whoops there minus five hundred pounds plus b y and that all has to equal zero. We'll do just a very little bit of algebra here and we're going to find out that a y plus b y equals fifteen hundred pounds. Well that's no big surprise. That just means the sum of the forces at their two reaction points has to equal the load, the total load on the uh, uh, beam. So we've got that. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to sum the moments. We can sum the moments anywhere we want. I'm going to sum about A, sum about a just so I can get rid of that force, and I'll just uh, solve for the other one here. All right. So let's see. I'm, now remember the uh, directions here. Uh, uh, whoops. Positive and negative uh, moments here. A positive moment goes in the counterclockwise direction. 
this is going to go clockwise and do that thousand pounds. So I'm going to have five feet times a thousand pounds plus or minus. Sorry, that's going to be a minus there. Uh, minus six feet times five hundred pounds plus ten feet times by. And I can do that a little more neatly. There. So there we've got that. Let's uh, add this up here. And I've got so minus 5,000 foot pounds minus, okay, 6 times 5 is, th is uh, three, 30, so that's minus 3,000 foot pounds plus 10 feet times by. And if we go through the, the next step here, we're going to find out that by equals 800 pounds. That's minus 8,000 foot pounds plus 10 feet times by. It's going to equal zero, so we're going to find out that by is 800, not foot pounds, 800 pounds. Okay, and because of that, ay is going to equal 700 pounds. All right, so we got that in frame, and we just do. Good. Um, now, let's st stop real quick and think, does this make sense? It does, because this force is slightly off-center. This 500-pound uh, uh, force is off the center of the beam, skewed a little bit this direction, so you'd expect the reaction force to be a little bit higher here. Whenever you get numbers like this, it's always good to stop and say, well, could that be the right answer? You know, give it the sniff test. You know, could, could this be right? And this, this clearly could be. So um, you know, it's amazing how many errors, dumb errors, you'll find by just stopping a second and go, okay, could this be right? All right, so we know that's going to be 800 pounds, and that's going to be 700 pounds. All right, so right now I'm going to get rid of this stuff right here, and we can draw the load shear moment diagram. We're good to go on that. Oh, with all these lights, it's starting to get hot in here. Um, let's see, I don't need that anymore. Okay, so let's draw the load shear moment diagram. I'm going to draw the there, there, and that's going to be a little off center. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's draw the load part first, and this is going to be in pounds. All right, so let's put the forces we know. There's going to be 700 pounds there. 800 there. Okay, I, the, the, I don't need to put pounds here because the pounds are already over there. You've got to have your units, but you only got to do it in one place. Now, this force is down, so I'm going to draw this as down. It takes a little more space, but if you do it this way, you tend to mess up less often. I'm just going to do it again. All right. There's that, and the last thing I'm going to do here is put my distributed force on here. There. So there's my 100 pound per foot distributed force. So that's going to be, I'll put that minus 100 right there. Okay, so I've got all the forces on here now. Next thing I need is shear. Well, shear, also in pounds by the way, is just the accumulation of force as you go across the beam from left to right. So let's just do exactly, well, that isn't very straight, is it? Let's do exactly what the drawing says to do. We're going to start here and we're going to go up 700 pounds, just like the, the load drawing says to do. Now, we're going to start accumulating negative force. Right? Now, this distance right here is 6 feet at 100 pounds per foot. So I'm going to go from 700, I'm going to go down to 100. I'm going to decrease 600 pounds. So I'm going to go to there. I'm not going to go to zero. That does not go to zero because we were only going down 600 pounds from there. Now what happens? Well, I go down another 500 pounds, so I'll go straight down here. Now 100 minus 500, last I checked, is minus 400. Okay, so that's going to be minus 400 pounds there. And what happens here? Well, I'm going to accumulate more negative force, so I'm going to keep going down. And I'm, going to, I'm down 400 now, and that's 4 feet here. All right, so I'm going to go down another 400 pounds, and this is going to be minus 800. All right, 
And fortunately, that positive 800 brings me right back to zero, and that's exactly what should happen. I start at zero and I end at zero. If that doesn't happen, you've got a problem. Okay, now let's, let's stop and notice a few things here. What's the slope of this line? Well, the slope of this line is the height of that line. So the slope here is minus 100, and the slope here and the slope here are going to be exactly the same, also minus 100, because the load is constant up there. So there's minus 100. Right? And the other thing to note is the, that the uh, height here is going to be the slope down there. So let's go ahead and draw that. Okay, now, we're going to start with a big positive number that gets less positive as we go over. Okay, slope here, or I'm sorry, height here equals slope there. So it's going to look kind of like that. Now, that slope there does not go to zero because this slope does not go to zero. Same thing's going to happen here. Now, I've got a big negative number that's getting more negative as we go. So it's going to look about like that. That's not a parabola because of that, uh, that uh, discontinuity right there. The only information we really need now that we don't have is the height right here. We probably really want the uh, maximum moment. Let me label moment here. And this is going to be in foot-pounds. All right. Remember, height here equals slope there. Area here equals height down there. Because you remember where we're talking about slopes and areas and heights and things like that? That's got to be about calculus. We can talk derivatives and integrals if we want, but for right now it's easier to just talk about uh, slopes and areas. So if I knew what the area of this was, and I'll call that A1 and A2, if I knew what A1 was, I would know what the height there was, and if I knew what A2 was, remember a negative area here is going to take us down, um, A1 and A2 would better be the same. Well, A1 looks like it's going to be 6 feet, because remember, base times height of, actually I should be I'm getting ahead of myself here, this is a triangle uh, set on top of a rectangle, so if I knew the height of the rectangle, and I'm sorry, the area of the rectangle and the area of the triangle, those would add up to be A1, so that the width, or the base, is 6 feet, and the height's going to be 100 pounds for that rectangle, plus 6 feet times the height, which is now 600 pounds, times a half, because the area of a triangle is 1 half BH. So let's throw some numbers in here. That's 600 foot-pounds plus, okay, let's see, half of 6 is 3 times 6 is 18. So 1,800 foot-pounds. If I do that right, I get 2,400 foot-pounds. Well, it sounds plausible. Okay, but just to double check, never give up, give up a chance to check your answer. Let's see what A2 is, see if we get the right number there. A2, now I'm going to get a slightly different uh, geometry here. I've got a, a rectangle there and a triangle there. These are both going to be negative areas, all right? So the, the width is uh, 4 and the height is 400. So minus 4 feet times 400 pounds minus, okay, 1 half BH again, minus 1 half times 4, four feet times height, which is also 400 pounds. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to get minus 1,600 foot-pounds. Okay, and let's see, that's going to be a 2 minus 800 foot-pounds, and that's going to be minus 2,400 foot-pounds. So I got the same answer both ways. This is really good. Hope this helps. Let me get out of your way here so you can get one more screenshot of this if you choose. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.